Hey everyone, it's Rihanna and welcome back to another video. So today I have something new to share with you guys. It's sort of an update, it's sort of not an update. However, 20 days ago I decided that I would set myself a challenge called the 100 Day Film Challenge. I'm sure that someone has discovered it before me, but I've just called it the 100 Day Film Challenge. So the challenge is to watch a new film every single day. No rewatches, new films that are on your watch list, that aren't on your watch list, Whatever you like, it's got to be a new film though. And so far in this 100 day film challenge, I have somewhat succeeded. Some days I do watch two films instead of one because the day before I didn't have time to watch a film, but I've never watched three films in one day. That is where I draw the line. That is where I will have to start again. So for this challenge, I wanted to think of a video to put out for you guys so you could see my progress. So today I'm gonna to be covering day one to 20 and I'm gonna tell you all of the films I've watched but I'm not gonna go into detail in all of them. I've chosen five films that are my highlights of day one to 20. So you can go check out my letterbox, which is where I'm keeping track of all of this, the 100 day film challenge. Down below in the description, I will leave the link or it is letterbox.com forward slash Rihanna Toria. So on day one, I watched Dr. Strange Love or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. On day two, I watched Clue. On day three, I watched Gone Baby Gone. Day four, I watched Valhalla Rising, which is actually one of the Cine Brew picks of the month, which you can go check out our hangout right here. On day five at the cinema, I watched The Boss starring Melissa McCarthy. On day six, I watched Harold and Maud on Netflix. Day seven, I watched The Double, directed by Richard Ayoade, which I really enjoyed, and I did a review for it in my More Movie Reviews, which is coming up later this month. On day eight, I went to see Jodie Foster's new film, Money Monster. On day nine, I watched My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Day 10, I finally got to watch Tale of Tales, which I also have a review for in my upcoming More Movie Reviews. On day 11, I watched the 2010 film, The Losers, starring Zoe Saldana and Jeffrey Dean Morgan. On day 12, it was Ghost in a Shell on Netflix, highly recommend that film. It's not in my highlights, but I recommend you see it before the new one comes out. On day 13, I watched another one of our Cinebrew picks, which is Incendies, which I will get onto in my highlights. Day 14 was 12 Angry Men, a classic. Day 15 is a film I have a review for, and that is The Conjuring 2. You can check it out here. On day 16, it was The Purple Rose of Cairo, directed by Woody Allen. The romantic comedy Drive Me Crazy from 1999 is our day 17. Day 18, after 20 years of not seeing it, I finally saw Independence Day, the first film in cinemas, and I loved it. On day 19, I was a little bit disappointed in its sequel, Independence Day Resurgence, which you can go check out my review rant for here. <laughs> And last but not least, on day 20, I watched the romantic comedy starring Daniel Radcliffe, What If. Out of all of the 20 films I've watched so far, I have five highlights that I would like to recommend to you guys. The first highlight is Clue, which came out in 1985 and stars Tim Curry. It's based off the popular board game Cluedo, and I don't know how it took me so long to watch this film. I love playing Cluedo, it's probably my favourite board game. This film is so incredibly bizarre and funny and clever and I absolutely loved it. It's so cheesy and the dialogue is hilarious. I love how they have the alternative endings. Tim Curry is amazing in the movie, obviously, because it's Tim Curry. And although board games and video games are completely separate things, I think video game movies could learn a lot from Clue. Clue doesn't take itself seriously. It knows its rules. It sticks to the rules of the game, and that's what I love. I love the structure of this movie. I think it's so clever how it sticks to the structure of the game Clue or Cluedo. Are they the same thing? I don't know. So if you haven't seen it, it is such a fun time. Watch it. My second recommendation is Gone Baby Gone, which was from day three, which is a film directed by Ben Affleck, starring his brother Casey Affleck and Michelle Monaghan. I think that's how you say her name. This film is about two personal investigators and they are also a couple. The main character is called Patrick, played by Casey Affleck. They live in a really rough neighbourhood and this little girl goes missing and her auntie enlists their help in finding her. That's all I want to tell you plot wise of Gone Baby Gone but this film is so so intense. I don't think I like it as much as Argo or as the town from Ben Affleck but I love his directional style and his story focus. He really really knows what he wants to focus on in this story. He knows where it's going. He just knows what he's doing in this film. He knows how to build tension. He knows how to relate characters to you. The acting in this film is incredible. The story is gritty and intriguing. And this film definitely questions your morals for that ending. The ending was fantastic. The only faults I have with this film are the pacing because it goes 
quite fast and then it really slows down in the middle which was kind of disappointing and the film does at points lose story focus unfortunately. A third recommendation and highlight is Money Monster directed by Jodie Foster. It stars George Clooney as Lee Gates who is a presenter of a money handling show and Julia Roberts as his director and what happens is one day they're just going about their normal schedule when someone who has been affected by a recent financial crisis comes into the studio and demands answers from Lee Gates by bringing in a bomb and a gun into the studio, holding hostages and having this all broadcasted live on air. Although Money Monster wasn't my favourite film out of all of these 20 films, I do think it is really important to see just for the fact that Jodie Foster directed it. I think female directors are going in the right direction. I think Hollywood is going in the right direction hiring female directors. I thought she did a really solid job for about three quarters of the movie. I did have some minor issues with it, especially the tonal shifts in the film from being very serious to kind of comical without trying to be comical. I think the story is really, really engaging and it's set in real time, which I think makes it 10 times more intense and she directs her actors perfectly. George Clooney, Julia Roberts and Jack O'Connell are fantastic in this film and it really makes you think as well. It handles the subject matter very, very well. My fourth recommendation is Incendies, which is directed by Denis Villeneuve. It was one of our picks for Cinebrew this month and this film is insanely, insanely good. If you're a fan of Denis Villeneuve, if you're a fan of cinema in general and intense, intriguing stories, you have to watch Incendies. Incendies is about two twins living in French Canada and their mother gives them letters when she passes away, one to give to their brother, one to give to their father, and both of them go on this journey to learn who their mother was and to learn who their brother and father is. And this film is just insane. The way Denis Villeneuve directs this gritty, realistic, almost war story and personal journey of this mother. The things she goes through is insane. The characters are amazing in this film. The dialogue's incredible. The ending is honestly one of my favourite endings in a film ever now. It's up there with Fight Club. <laughs> Go into this film knowing nothing, you will be mind blown. It's such a draining film to watch but it's also very rewarding because Denis Villeneuve doesn't dumb his audience down. It is spoken in, I believe, French and Arabic as well. So there's two languages, it has subtitles, he knows this audience isn't dumb and he just gives it as it is and that's what I love about this film. It's so realistic, it's so in-depth and heartbreaking and as I said, the ending of this film is amazing. And my fifth recommendation from the first 20 films I've watched in the 100 Day Film Challenge is The Purple Rose of Cairo, which is directed and written by Woody Allen. I had no idea this film existed. I haven't seen that many Woody Allen films, but I just found this randomly on Netflix and this is an hour and 22 minutes long, I believe, and I needed a quick watch. So I sat down and watched this film and I was pleasantly surprised. This film follows Mia Farrow's character, Cecilia, who was kind of bored in her marriage. Her husband is abusive and he goes out and drinks while she works at home, she cleans, and the only escape she really has is going to the movie theatre because she loves watching characters on screen. So automatically I connected with Cecilia's character. And one day this new feature comes to town called The Purple Rose of Cairo and she watches this film so many times she loves it. And that is where I'm going to stop telling you about The Purple Rose of Cairo. I just need you to go in this film knowing nothing. This film is so clever and innovative and I aim to write stories like this film. The way that this film is written and the way that the plot goes reminded me a lot of Midnight in Paris, which is also a Woody Allen film, which happens to be one of my favourite films of all time. I just think this is such a genius screenplay. It's so simplistic and it just has that Woody Allen kind of magic where you don't know what's going to happen, you don't know what sort of world you're in, but you go with the flow anyway. I'm not sure if general audiences would like it, but I do feel like people who love film and also love Woody Allen films need to check out The Purple Rose of Cairo. It is kind of a masterclass for screenwriting for me personally. When I was watching this film happen, I was thinking to myself, this is genius writing, I love it, I want more. And there you have it, those are my five recommendations and highlights for the first 20 days of the 100 Day Film Challenge. I hope you guys start doing this challenge. I mean, you can set up your own rules, but I just encourage you to watch more new films. And even though it's just a list on Letterboxd to me, it gives me the motivation every day 
to watch a new film every day and I've seen more films in the past 20 days than I think I have in a long time. It's getting me motivated to watch new stuff and I'm very appreciative of it. So if you like this idea of me giving you updates on the 100 day film challenge let me know down below in the comments and if you've seen any of the films I've watched tell me what you thought of them down below. If you like this video I would love if you gave it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. I put on new TV reviews and movie reviews every single week. All my social media links including my Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and Letterboxd will be down below in the description, come follow me. And thank you guys so so much for watching this video, I will see you very very soon, bye!